welcome back to Ask the Agronomist. I'm Laura Cunningham here with Phil Long to address our topic today, which is high yield soybeans and the importance of nodes. Yeah, so it's a little bit of a gloomy day today, but um, certainly the time of year when, when soybeans are starting to fill pods, we're starting to see some of that going on. Um, but really, I keep getting a lot of questions about uh, yield estimates. And uh, yield estimates in soybeans are not a fun thing to do. Uh, everybody enjoys doing it in corn, but when it comes to soybeans, they're pretty tricky. Uh, so I thought it'd be a good idea to talk about the more important issue, which really is node number, and the, the, the effect that the different things that we do in terms of management can have on the node number throughout the year. So, you know, we're standing out in our, in our uh, Latham Premier Agronomy Center here, our, our plots, and I've got a couple different uh, things to look at here uh, just to kind of talk about why it's so important because you probably hear a lot of the time, you know, we want to be canopied by R1 or uh, now the, the new thing is uh, flowering before the summer solstice and things like that. Um, all these things to get achieve high yielding soybeans. But, but really the goal is we want to get as many nodes as we can so that we can get more opportunity at more flowers, more pods and retain those obviously. You know, any amount of stress, especially as we're sitting here, you know, going into that seed fill time period that's when stress starts to really slow down soybeans and you know either abort the pods that are just finishing up or abort seeds as they're coming on. But if you don't have the nodes, you're not gonna have the pods, you're not gonna have the flowers. So node number really is critical. I, I would say above all else, if you're out trying to do yield, yield estimates this time of year on soybeans, if you learn nothing else, hopefully you learn what your stand is at harvest time. I mean, take a stand count and you know count those nodes and understand what the nodes are on the plants that you have and how you can do it better next year to get more nodes more opportunity for more yield so so nodes really really important do you have some visuals you can show us kind of yeah, how to sure. how to address that in our own field yeah so i've got a couple a couple things to look at here and the first one's going to be oh, <laughs> as i throw it right in front of the camera uh, the discussion on early planting this this comes up a lot you know especially when we have tough years like this year, is it worth it to plant early? You know, like, like I always say, try it on a field or two. You know, you can try it on one field or something. Uh, there's a lot of people doing what they call ultra early planting now, which I don't necessarily uh, think is a great idea, but early planting in soybeans is gonna get you the most yield. If you wanna do anything without changing equipment or really anything, you just have to change when you're planting. So maybe a discussion with uh, those that you farm with, hey, can we put the, you know, can we put some beans in the ground before corn or alongside of corn? Sometimes that's the hardest part of the discussion. So, um, early planting. So I've got two beans here. These are these are our E3 uh, 19s, uh, 1995s, and I've got two different planting dates here. So this one was planted uh, about when it should have been, uh, the 8th of May, I believe it was, and then this one here was planted late. So this one was planted on the 10th of June. So about a whole month difference. And I'll try to hold them together here, right in front of me so you can see, but the height difference is probably the most noticeable. You know, here we've got the height of the June 10th planting versus the on-time planting, I'll call it, early May uh, here. And then as we count the node number on these, and I've already counted them, so we don't have to do that, uh, but the, the, the early planting has uh, 14 nodes, or excuse me, 15 nodes, uh, and then the late planting, the June 10th, has 10 nodes. So you can tell there's a lot less nodes on this late planted one. More nodes, more opportunity for pods. So the other thing I wanna talk a little bit about is, is how we count these nodes. So uh, we're looking at the bottom of the plant here. I've done this a few times, uh, but uh, it's important to understand, you know, when you're looking at a soybean plant, where those nodes are at. So when we're counting nodes, usually we get to reproduction, we're like, ah, who cares about nodes? But it's important. So we need to understand how many nodes are actually on the plant. So if you look at the very base of the plant where I pulled it up and I kind of chopped the roots off, uh, but that first node, you always, you can feel it. This case, it does have a little uh, branch coming off of it still. That's the cotyledonary node. So those are the first true leaves coming off the, uh, out of the ground. That's that node there. And the, the, these first two nodes will always be uh, two scars. You can feel them, two scars, and they'll be opposite of each other. So that's the cotyledons and then the unifoliates will be next and you'll be able to feel, feel two scars there as well. And then the next node you'll feel will be one scar on one side. So this side doesn't have anything and this one has a scar where the leaf was. So that's our number one node. So then you can count from there one all the way down the plant. And in this case, 
It's a 1.9, so it's, it's obviously a little more ahead of things. You can see by the maturity of the pods, um, they're full. Uh, we're, we're at R5, well into R5 here, um, just working on seed fill. But you can see that we've terminaled out here. It's, it's done, it's got a pod on the top, a terminal raceme as we sometimes call it. Sometimes you can get clusters at the top here. So uh, that's, just, that's how you count nodes. Uh, so that's important when you're going out there. That's probably as important as anything is understanding where those nodes are. And then the other thing I want to point out this year, and I'm going to talk here next about population, but is how close these are. And, and we've talked about this all season, uh, but how these nodes stack up, just like when you're looking at a corn plant. So I've got the cotyledon, the unifoliate node, and then one, two, three. So, so there's my first three nodes in about an inch and a half. Uh, so that, that tells us right there, see that there's V3 when it was at V3. So V1 to V3 was a stressful time for this plant and all these plants around here. So that was the month of May. Uh, we struggled, things sat there, we had low moisture, but we also had cool temperatures. And you can tell there's not much node or inner node elongation there um, that, that's going to make that difference that they're really close to the ground. So unfortunately, that's not good for pod set. You can see we don't have a lot of pods down here, but uh, that's good. You know, when we get to harvest, here's the soil line. So most people's header height is probably, I mean, four inches is going to be pretty low. You know, and we're within three to four inches of that first pod. So likely it'll be cut somewhere in there. We may lose a pot or two here, but uh, you got to remember that the lower part of the stem uh, is likely not going to be harvested. So just remember that's kind of how you diagnose, you know, if there's things going on in the early season, it, it's a good indication. It's a little bit of a storybook, if you will, looking back in the life cycle, how, how much internode elongation you have between each node and as you go down the plant obviously you see as it gets longer and longer these these inner nodes get get pretty big there we've got at least two to three inches between the ones at the top of the plant so so Phil one more question for you if a farmer is considering trying planting earlier than normal are there other things that they, they should think about besides just a management practice change and talking to their partners about products or things that are that are going to come into play with an earlier planting yeah so I mean the, the biggest thing probably is that discussion of, of making sure that everybody's okay with it. Um, but I would say the number one thing, and, and this goes, you know, for anybody that, that's going for high yield soybeans, um, not to be a salesman here, but it, make sure you have seed treatment on. So, you know, seed treatment is probably the most important thing you can do early season because the earlier you plant, the longer they're going to sit there. And, and even as they're out of the ground, you know, that time that it takes them to get out of the ground for those that planted this year right after Easter and so forth, they sat in the ground for a long time. You don't want the seed to be unprotected as it grows that slowly in the ground. And even once it gets above, it's still going to have some of that protection from those fungal pathogens and stuff early on uh, that will really help boost it. You know, that, that's the difference, you know, to get, uh, to get a seed, the seed treated, you're going to have a better start. And I know a lot of, a lot of folks now are using Infero. Uh, fertilizers and things even the soybeans are starting to you know that's great but really the best thing you can do early on is put a seed treatment on it to give it that boost early on out of the ground this is probably the biggest consideration that I would I would encourage okay so the next the next demonstration here I got um, is the population and this is a hot topic it seems like one we'll probably be talking about for a while I, I did a demo actually we're standing kind of right in front of it uh, population between 100,000 and 160,000. Uh, we do have a few other demos here too about popu around population, but um, this goes back to uh, we've had in the last couple years a lot of high yield, uh, even here in Iowa, uh, a lot of high yield uh, soybean uh, producers growing what I would consider pretty low population soybeans. So, and, and that I mean 180,000 planting population, uh, really, really low. Uh, population and the, and the goal with that is uh, you know they feel is to get them to branch more they have more room to expand as we know soybeans will take up any room that they can uh, and that's the good part about soybeans but there's some things to consider you know it's completely opposite of what we were just talking about if you're planting early I wouldn't encourage you to plant ultra low populations because once again you probably will have some stand loss that's why I talk about seed treatment so much in early planting but uh, when it comes to that, I, I want to point out a few things on these plants, the differences between them. So I've got the node numbers here. We've got 100,000, and I'll have to, uh, you're not going to be able to tell really well, but uh, there is a difference uh, in height here, and it's about here. 
to here. So there's a difference and as we look across the plots, it's a good four to five inches as you walk across the plots. So the, the higher the population, the 160,000 in this case compared to the 100,000 uh, is, is, is taller. So does it turn around and, and do something for us in nodes? Uh, actually, it's a little bit opposite. I counted 100, the 160,000 has 16 nodes, the 100,000 has 17 nodes. So it has more nodes. So that must be a good thing, right? Well, the other thing you got to consider, so this is our this is our low population one here, and you can tell that it's branched quite a bit more. It's it's trying to fill in any extra light voids that it can find, so it's going to branch more. And if you're planting at 80,000 or less, it's it's obviously they're going to branch a lot. The stem diameter is going to be uh, much larger uh, than a higher population. Uh, but the other thing is where it throws these pods, and, and in this case, I found one that, that doesn't have a lot of pods on the lower stem here. Uh, but typically, this is what I see when I go out in a field that's got low population. They tend to throw pods. Now, here's the here's node number one right here, and it's got a pretty big uh, branch coming off of it as well as node number two. Um, but typically, they'll throw pods on these lower nodes. And that's what you don't want to see because in a low population situation, we typically have more pods lower in the plant because they're shorter stature overall and they're going to try to because they have plenty of uh, opportunity nutrients and sunlight they're going to put pods on wherever they can which is why people see them and they're like wow that plant's loaded uh, but uh, that's not always a good thing you got to remember where your cutter bar is going to be running in, at harvest time and, and make sure that you can capture that uh, as well so this this one at the higher population doesn't have quite as much branching like I said, you want to pick a soybean variety that's going to match your situation too. You don't want to pick one that's going to lodge if you're planting really high populations, but this is in 30 inch rows. So, um, but yeah, the differences between branching is probably the, the biggest when it comes to the, the 100 versus 160,000, you know, and, and, and understanding uh, how many po uh, pods and nodes are going to throw on this plant. So uh, I didn't count the number of pods on, on these to compare them, but uh, in terms of nodes, they are pretty similar. Um, but the other thing that you'll notice uh, if you actually look down through this, we were just, just talking about node elongation. You know, what makes this, this higher population taller is it puts longer inner nodes in between there. So um, just some things to consider as you're, as you're looking towards next year and looking at fields right now. Uh, like I said, the biggest thing right now is, is understanding what population is out there in the field uh, and then adjusting your planting population for next year. So then the last question, how do we go about taking a yield estimate on soybeans? Yeah, the, the unfun question to answer. I, I can't say I don't enjoy, as much as I like soybeans, I don't enjoy doing uh, yield estimates on soybeans. Uh, it's very similar to corn, like I mentioned. Uh, you can take a, a, in 30 inch rows, you take your 17 feet, five inches, uh, and get a count on your stand. Obviously that's probably the most important part to me is understanding what's out there now, right before harvest compared to what you planted in the spring, that may make you change some uh, change some things up for next year if you take that stand count now. So then then basically you're gonna take an average, you're gonna get the number of pods on the plant and average number of seeds. So typically you take a subset of that and then you count the, the number of pods and then you're gonna count the number of uh, seeds that, or get an average. So you're gonna get an average of the number of seeds per pod uh, and then boil it down. And like corn, we have to use a factor, you know, whether it's 80 or 90,000, you know, per, per bushel, we have to, we have to do a, a, you know, a rough estimate. And typically that's around 3,000 uh, seeds per bushel. It, it, the problem with soybeans is that that creates such a wide range of yield possibility uh, that it can get somebody really excited. And, you know, you should be doing this at the R6 stage. We're not quite there yet. R6 is a full bean in the top in one of the top four nodes so you should be doing it when you get to that point so you know that they're not going to abort those those pods those seeds and make sure you only count the seeds that are filling up the pod obviously so uh, just some things to think about it takes a lot longer than what it does with corn um, uh, but you know it can give you a rough idea of what's out there counting the number of pods per plant and seeds per pod and so forth gives you that that understanding of what's going on there but by the time you do 10 of those in one field you'll probably be tired uh, and maybe just get out and, and count some nodes and stands, which is what I typically do to get an idea of what's going on out there. Okay, so unpack one more question for me. Why is it so important to take a stand count 
this close to harvest. And you mentioned earlier that might cause us to change the management practices. What did, what were you yeah, so kind of talking about the, there? The biggest thing, and, and, and it could be more than just this, but the biggest thing for me is, is a lot of the time we don't understand how much Phytophthora takes uh, from us even mid-season. Phytophthora is early season and pretty much all the way up to R6. And there's, there's other things that can uh, also actually competition. Um, we've got some narrower rows here and some late planted stuff. The competition actually will cause soybeans to either not pod or die off. Um, just between plant to plant competition, if they're too close and things like that, they will, they will sacrifice or they understand what's going on next to them. So the, between the Phytophthora and the competition, a lot of times you, you think you planted 140,000, so if that's what you're using at harvest time, you're likely off. It could be 10, 20% lower than that. Uh, so you need to take that count. Maybe you're sitting at 100, 105,000, which is which is fine. We we want to be at least 100,000 at at, at at harvest time. Uh, but if you're sitting way lower than that, then you know that you lost quite a bit. So whether it's a seed treatment decision next year, or maybe planting a little higher population. Obviously, we talked a little bit about it, but you know the only other way to get more pods per per area is more plants. But like I said, soybeans are give and take. So they're going to adjust and adapt based on their surroundings, uh, and, and you got to take those all into consideration. So if you've got 100,000 plants out there right now, and they look potted really well, that's that's about right where you want to be at. Obviously, other considerations like weed management and so forth is pretty important with soybeans. But uh, yeah, that's that's probably the biggest thing when it comes to, to soybeans and, and understanding yield. Okay. Great consideration to have at this time of year when we don't necessarily think about stand counts as, as exactly. often. But um, thanks to the viewers that send in those questions about high yield soybeans. Uh, if you have a question that you'd like Phil to address in a future segment, be sure to send us a message on social media. That's where we get some of the input for these weekly videos. So we'll be back next week with another topic. Thanks for watching.